What's it take to be successful as a freelance developer or IT professional? That's what we're going to find out on this episode of Dynamic Developer. I'm your host, Bill Detweiler, and on this episode, I'm joined by Sati Bahadur, Chief Technology Officer at Upwork. We're going to talk about the rise of the gig economy, how it's affecting the market for top tech talent, and some tips for devs and other IT professionals considering the jump into freelance work. Sati, thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. All right, so before we get to what we're really here to talk about, which is sort of the future of work and how that relates to freelance and independent contractors, uh, for folks who aren't familiar with Upwork, uh, tell us about what you do. Well, I'm the Chief Technical Officer on Upwork, and Upwork is the uh, world marketplace, uh, the work marketplace. And uh, my job is to build scalable systems um, and take Upwork on the next journey as we expand globally. Okay, and and what a, a little bit about maybe um, Upwork's kind of uh, operations. What what is it Upwork does as a company? So Upwork is the world's work, work marketplace, and we are truly disrupting the uh, the future of work. Um, as um, as most people know, COVID has changed perceptions of how work is done. Uh, there was already a lot of demand uh, for people to work uh, in different environments. So whether it's hybrid or whether it's freelance uh, or whether um, it's a different sort of set of people coming together to solve a problem. This was happening. The demand was there. There was always a problem of hiring the right talent as well. But what COVID did was to get businesses over that hump, which is um, it's okay now to be working from anywhere. It's okay now to be freelancing. It's okay now uh, to prioritize your life because it kind of told us our mortality as well uh, versus the work uh, that we do. So it became more of um, you're trying to get something done and to achieve a goal and how you do it matter less. And so Upwork is the company that's the that's making it happen. It's a centerpiece of what's happening right now. It's the perfect storm for Upwork to take off, if you will. Um, and we have been enabling the global marketplace now. Um, we, we've been enabling people to, uh, to find the right positions and right work and we are enabling our clients and our companies to come and get them. So whether they are small companies with one or two people or whether it's like a Fortune 100, like you know, it's a Microsoft or Airbnb or any of them, we are able to scale to meet all of the needs, um, which also means uh, that we need to scale rapidly because we went from a single product line company to a multiple product line company in the last couple of years and we will expand more, uh, which means we have a really good team, but now it's time to pivot to say how best you can go and um, uh, and deliver on or scale up um, as we expand in the next few years. Okay, so you're providing that connection between people who are the, looking for work and the people who are looking to hire uh, tech talent. So, you know, let's drill down on that a, a little bit. You know, we've really seen a rise in kind of the gig economy over the past decade. But, you know, um, two businesses that I've been part of my, my whole career, tech and media, have really always had a tradition of freelance and independent contract work. You know, however, at least on the tech side, that seems to really be accelerating uh, more rapidly than in the past. So what does that mean for IT pros, those individuals who are out there looking for a new job either now or who will be in the future? H how should they approach things? That's a fantastic question. Um, I think IT pros, the time is now for them. And we've been watching, there's a significant demand and a very short supply of IT talent. So that means right now is the time for them to kind of um, put their conditions forward on how they want to work and what they want to work for and what it means for them and what their career goals are, right? And so if companies are unable to match that, then it's their opportunity to go to the next step or look differently, right? Uh, we'll tie it back to a couple of things, right? So I'm the great resignation is underway, um, and I'll get to that uh, probably later if you, if you have a chance. But what that really means is people are finding the right opportunity for them, irrespective of the boundary that they had drawn for themselves today, right? They are not they are no longer waiting to climb a corporate ladder that's defined by a company. They are no longer looking at like you know I need to work in this specific place and drive two hours to the job same day. It's, it, there's no need to do that anymore which means that, and they're also finding that their talent has more value than what they were getting paid or they were getting recognized for. So 
the freelancing is another term. I mean, a term that we used to use to define a, a kind of people, but really it's talent and it's all about lifestyle. And if you think about that, uh, the next generation and even our generation is trying to figure out that we can put our lifestyle in front and center of how we want to be and the work and the value comes along with it. You know, that makes sense. So, and drilling down on that a little more uh, for IT pros who are considering making that switch from maybe what they're accustomed to with the permanent position to being a freelancer or an independent contractor, you know, what should they know uh, to be successful in this new world? And what mistakes uh, should they avoid making? This is a be bold situation. This is a, a place for them to take risks. This is a place for them to rec recognize that it's no longer the old place. So I, if I were in their shoes, I would be like looking for my next position. That is my aspire to position. I could do it remotely or from wherever I would want to work as long as it meets my requirements per se. And I would also be look rec recognizing the fact that the old shackles of um, whether it's work at work or work anywhere are no longer there. The boundaries have blurred quite a bit. Um, and so whether they want to move from full-time positions to freelancing, there are multiple places out there which will help you get there. And Upwork is in the business of making sure that they are successful. Um, and I am, for example, expanding my team globally. Um, and this is, uh, and, and I'm looking at most of my, as you know, most of my workforce is, uh, is our freelancers. And we have managed to deliver with the freelancing population that we have, and we are expanding like there's no tomorrow. Um, and so I would say, come out, reach out. It's us that are trying to make connections, starting with me. So let's talk about that a little bit, actually. You know, thinking about the flip side and hiring managers like yourself, you know, how is the transition to more remote work and freelance work really affecting uh, their searches for top tech talent? I think um, most CTOs and CIOs are spending, I mean, if they don't keep ahead of it, are spending a significant portion of their time just now just hiring folks. And hiring has become a full-time job. So if you're trying to, people are leaving, we know that, um, and people are, and everyone is impacted. So if you're trying to keep ahead of the curve and you want to be scaling your business, you have to be in the place where you're constantly hiring and constantly replenishing your talent, which becomes 100% of your job uh, if you're not too careful about it, right? Now, the boundaries that we had uh, where how do I connect people? How do I make teams? How do I make hybrid teams? All of this stuff like you know didn't happen in the past. You either were like FTE or you were contractors, right? And some freelancing, but it has changed how CTOs and managers start thinking about hiring talent. They kind of go, I just need to get this done, whether it's done remote, whether it's done in a team that's filled with FTEs plus freelancers, whether it's some hybrid model that I outsource that's managed and is compliant with local laws. Those are all problems that they expect to be solved by a company like Upwork so that they can work with us and we can get them going on that. And we are, uh, we are, it gets them out of the position of looking for talent because we provide them this highly skilled set of talent that's pre-vetted, that's on the platform that they can use for their needs. And most of the people that we have on Upwork um, are highly skilled workers. Uh, especially if you think about the software development uh, aspect of it, or if you, uh, especially in the software area, right? Um, and the quality is something that is very different from other platforms that's out there. Do you think that, so my question, a follow-up to that would be, you know, that you, you see that more and more, that, that, that shifting to independent contractors, freelance, gig work. But one of the consequences of that is that some of those benefits, um, and especially here in the U.S., some of the really important benefits were often tied to your employer. So how have you been helping both your clients who are the job seekers and your clients who are the companies trying to hire that talent? How are you helping maybe bridge that gap uh, between the old way of thinking about things like health insurance here um, in the U.S., but other benefits like retirement or paid time off, things like that, that maybe, especially people who have been in the workforce for a while, may be more accustomed to getting through their employer as opposed to a, a third party? I, great question. I think there are a couple of points there. One of the biggest points that uh, employers talk about is culture, right? And I think um, every single time we've had this conversation in every company that I have worked with, uh, it's like we can't do remote or we can't do hybrid workforce because the culture will not permeate down to them. And there are different rules for how you work with 
your full-time employees versus your hybrid employees or your remote employees. Um, the, the pandemic made all of us overcome it. it. The initial phase was all about brainstorming and like we all thought it was temporary. It's gonna be like a couple of months, we'll all be back. So we'll all just you know move on. And then came the next part, which is like we got suddenly got thoughtful about the new people that we're bringing on and how we want to do it. So we started like you know documenting our processes. We started figuring how our learning and development works so that we could permeate our culture to the people that we're bringing on in a in a global workforce. That's great. Like all companies started figuring it out. Many of them did. That for us as a company at Upwork as a company is a playbook. It's a playbook to say, if you want to disseminate information to employees that are global, this is how you would go about doing it. Same thing applies for benefits, health insurance, compliance, taxations, because now all of that is now part of a package of how you manage your employees irrespective of type. Um, and as a business, when you're trying to run it, you don't want to think of them as like FT versus non-FT versus whatever. You think of them as this homogeneous set of people who achieve an objective and there are different requirements that they have, but that's solved at a different layer for you. Um, and each company can then um, optimize for what works best for them. And, and is that a hard transition to make as you talk to companies? It, th that sounds like a dramatic shift in thinking for some companies that, and maybe not just a dramatic shift in thinking, but actually a dramatic shift in financial structure in their, you know, depending on their, uh, their processes and their back end systems. Um, is that a, you know, has that been a hard change for companies uh, to, to make, to wrap their head around? I think it's a, uh, I think it's a mental shift. The tools and processes come along once there's a mental shift, right? And I think the mental shift is much more easier now, simply because of an event of a global pandemic, because we kind of now are open to the idea that this is a viable option and the genie is out of the bottle. So none of the people who are out there, so it's a confluence of two things, right? Uh, the genie is out of the bottle. The people who are at home, they don't want to, like many of them don't want to come back. Uh, my wife, for example, would never want to go back to work uh, as the traditional work. She's like, why didn't we have this before? And it's just not hers. Like everybody else, like many, many people that I talk to go, I want to work in this mode permanently, which means, uh, and, and they also want to travel. They also want to do things that they didn't do before. Uh, and so they are willing to negotiate. And depending on where the company is in their thought process, they're willing to negotiate on whether that's a full-time position, whether it's an hourly position, whether it's an independent contractor, whether it's a freelancer, whatever you want to classify it for that company's current mindset, which means all of them at some point needs to start thinking out, and the big ones already are, on how they handle, how, how do they manage it. Now, either they can figure it out themselves if they're super large enough, or they could take the playbook of people um, uh, of a company like Upwork who tell them, look, we looked at the best practices of everyone across, here's the right playbook, it's absolutely customizable to the people you have. And we will plug in to your tools and processes that now you manage this, your workforce that you have that could be anything. It could be all FTEs, it could be not. And we would want to be in that mode of providing you the right talent to get your job done. Okay. Yeah. So you, you've touched on it a few times. And of course, you know, we, we've all lived through it in these last year plus. Um, so, but, but I'd like to think about going forward. So how significant do you think COVID and the Delta variant that we're kind of living with now in particular will be to this search and, and for top talent um, in the, in the months uh, to come and next year? I think COVID as a, um, as a, situation was good to force our thinking on how we approached work in general. Um, I think the, the tech challenge was still there, like hiring the right tech set of people was still there. The demand for freelancers was still there. Uh, the demand for independent talent was just rapidly growing. All of that stuff were already happening, but what this did was to change the mental mindset of a lot of people rather than being an advertising campaign or a brand thing saying, hey, you need to go do X, the event forced everyone to start thinking. And that makes, so once this event is done and we are kind of, you know, I would not guess where this would go, but uh, I don't see anything materially changing on how we behave going forward. I think many of us will have to go and solve this problem. The future of work has already changed, whether we like it or not, this is how it's gonna be. Uh, and 
the great resignation is a result of it because people are like, wait a minute, I just realized I am not tied to this stuff anymore. I can do more stuff and I don't need to go back to my employer and you know ask him for the same constraints. Like, hey, come back to work. No, I don't want to, right? So uh, all of those things are making people think about where they want to be in a post-COVID world. Um, and so what we are seeing is the beginning of folks setting up their career, specifically higher, um, and they are trying to go test the market because they are they're finding out they are highly valuable. It's like the housing market. It's like you're finding out the house is super valuable now. It's the talent is finding out that they are super valuable right now. And so it's causing the change to uh, go and try new and different things, which means that more and more people will be on a, uh, on a hybrid workforce or a remote workforce or uh, just working a certain hours at a time, not having that full-time tag. So it's like a part-time, but it still gives you the position and financial security to move forward in their lives. Right. You know, on Tech Republic, we've been writing about something you mentioned, the great resignation for a long time. And we know that people are leaving their current positions in record numbers for, like you said, better opportunities, which don't always just mean more money. You know, it's it's a lot more about balance and being able to travel and doing those things that you feel uh, they're meaningful in your life. So, so how is this trend affecting um, the market for freelance tech workers and, and those considering that jump from being a permanent employee to a freelancer? I, I think that this, so I think this is a very positive development for the freelancer market. Uh, I think we now have significant talent who realize that they are very valuable. They're getting really good benefits, whether it's financial or whether it's life goals uh, for the work that they're trying to do. And then companies starting with Upwork is looking to hire this talent. The great designation is both a curse and a boon. This is a great place for you know, companies to go out there and pick the right talent that they need who would normally not be um, you know, looking for jobs to be working uh, in different places. Um, the mode of working, whether it's freelance or not, is relevant, but not that relevant either. Um, it, it's, it's what prefer, people would prefer to do. Um, and look at me. I mean, I joined Upwork as their CTO, and I'm the only guy or at least one few people who I know in Seattle. Um, and I, this is unimaginable two years back. Like if you had talked to me two years back and or talk to any company and said, are you you're a publicly traded company? You're going to hire a CTO that is remote and doesn't even like interact with the people on, on, on personally, you'd have laughed at it, right? But, uh, and now here we are. Um, and, and this is the new normal. And so for me, I have, a, I have access and so do companies to talent that is remote, that is in different parts of the world, who's fantastic that, that can work to better themselves. Um, and as Upwork, we provide economic opportunities for everyone. That's part of our mission statement, but that is now global. And we are, this is, this is where everyone is getting to. Um, and so not only can, would I love to be hiring that talent today, I'm sure every CTO out there is looking for that talent today. Well, I mean, Sati, I can't think of a better place uh, to kind of end it. I, I think that's a great statement uh, to wrap up our conversation. Thank you again for being here, um, sharing your insights, your knowledge, telling us about Upwork. I really appreciate it. Thank you, Bill. And thank you to all our viewers and listeners for joining us. You can listen to more episodes of Dynamic Developer on your favorite podcast platform or watch a video of each episode and read a transcript at Tech Republic. Thank you.